What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. Before we jump into today's video, guys, a huge shout out to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. Raycon is disrupting the electronics industry by designing premium wireless audio for half the price without compromise. They're doing things differently than other brands out there from the way they design their products to the way they price them. Raycon prioritizes their customer experience from start to finish. Raycon offers their wireless earbuds in a range of fun colors and patterns with a variety of fit options and no dangling wires or stems. Raycon earbuds give you six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design for a comfortable, noise-isolating fit. Now, if you're trying to take a break from your phone, computer screen, tablet, but you don't want to completely unplug, Raycon is the best way to take your favorite podcasts, music, whatever videos it might be with you on the go. The company was co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Rich the Kid, and Mike Tyson are absolutely obsessed with these Raycon earbuds. The best part about Raycon is it has a 45 day free return policy. So if you guys wanna click the link down in the description down below and go to buyraycon.com slash flare, you can get 15% off your own pair of Raycon earbuds. I absolutely love wearing these Raycon earbuds. They don't fall out. They're great for long plane rides, doing chores, mowing the lawn, stuff like that. Like I said, they're the most comfortable earbuds on the market. They don't fall out, by far my favorite. And on top of all that, they have an extremely long battery life. Again, huge shout out to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. It is brands like them that I partner up with that allow me to do what I do every single day, which is make videos for you guys to enjoy at home. So with that being said, enjoy the rest of today's video. Shoo! Welcome back, folks, to uh, the rainforest here. Look how much, look at this. Look what we got dangling here. Lucy, don't get too wet there, buddy. It's kind of, oh, oh, you're not helping the rain situation. Yeah, I would say we got some, maybe we need a French drain here or something like that. It is really raining out here today, like pouring. We're supposed to get three inches of rain. It rained all night. It's raining all day. It's nasty out here. We wanted to actually head down to the ranch, but obviously it's raining. So today, well today, and we're going to continue this video, we are going to work on this, which is the shop that has turned into, it looks kind of like a mix between a hoarder's house and like a grenade went off in here. I mean, it's just, we, we neglected it. Well, basically when it was cold, there's no heat in here. So like, None of us wanted to like do anything when it was cold in here. So we're like, okay, we're just not gonna like organize and fix it. We procrastinated, let's just be honest. So we gotta get the boat ready, obviously for spring fishing. This, I, I don't know what any of this is to be honest with you. So we've gotta kind of organize this. The back tools, all my tools are still at the cabin. So we don't really have anything to do with that, but we still need to clean up that. The other side, we have no mules in here because they're either at the ranch getting worked on, a bunch of other stuff. And so, which honestly makes it nice because then we got a nice open spot. But I mean like ice fishing gear, we don't, all of that needs to go up. So there's stuff that needs to go up, stuff that needs to go down and the boat mainly the boat needs to be fixed up i mean there's like wrenches and clay cannons and all the trap like all of our trapping stuff can be taken up because it's not trapping season anymore so we're gonna spend the day today probably only like the next hour or two we got we got three other beefcakes we got zach banjo and pool jet and myself so we got four beefcakes it really shouldn't take us that long but we figured we might as well document it for you guys show you guys a little time lapse of us getting after it cleaning organizing and then hopefully tomorrow we are going to go set up some feeders so we got some big well actually there's a box right there big giant feeders for the ranch set them out with actual protein and mineral and one of my buddies garrett's gonna come out and help us kind of like look for sheds and look for places to like maybe hang tree stands one day or put blinds and stuff like that he's more uh educated in the deer hunting world than i am so with that being said let's get to clean folks well we got about i would say we're halfway done that only took us about 37 minutes or so boat is cleaned up I have not seen this boat this clean for like six months looks good i mean there's still some little things obviously you got fence posts but it's raining so we can't really go anywhere like we can't run basically we just got to work within the shop we can't run around too much but oh there you go mail you want a bone too yeah you guys just need to calm down over there so we got all this or i mean the bins themselves aren't that organized that's like once everything's kind of in place what was that? I said, did, did one of those boats just get sent into the shop? That sounded like something that just, sound like that smacked the side of the, the building. Maybe that pallet? No, that pallet must've been leaning up there. 
Oh God, it's freaking getting it right now. Look at this. Yeah, we need that grading job I did was not that good. Man, this is the most room we've seen all year. Anyways, so we've got about, I would say about halfway done. Now this side's for the most part cleaned up and organized. Like I said, I still need to like go through the bins and actually sort them. But the idea is just get the objects, like get hunting stuff up top and then work on it. Get fishing stuff down here and then work on it and stuff like that. You've drying them titties off or what? Oh, yeah. Really? So now we've got this side. This side is now a mess. A lot of what we had over here, we just moved over to this side. The gun room is now somewhat of a disaster. Disaster. Um, this is another project. I've got, I did finally get some panels for back there and then we got to build a shelf. That's another day's project, but um, we ended up just throwing a bunch of stuff in here. So now we got this side, but this all is going upstairs. So this is all going to run up. Some stuff that's up, like honestly, most of that's going to go up. Some stuff up there is going to come down. And then once everything's kind of where it's supposed to be, we'll start tearing into bins and stuff and making new bins and labeling them. And just like, there's no point in doing all this and then not knowing where anything is. So we kind of need to go through the bins and actually sort what's inside of them. Half of it's done. Now it's time to work on this half and take stuff upstairs and bring stuff from upstairs downstairs. done for the day clean it up we got even the dirt scraped up ready to go lots of stuff reloaded up there taken down from there and put over there so it's looking good i mean the boat's nice and clean to where we can go band's ready to give the bluegills a dangle now we had to unbury this sucker and we've got a bunch of wood under there so i mean before we take it out we'll have to do a little bit lucy she wants to go she wants to catch the bluegills don't you lucy no don't do it lucy lucy no don't do it you're gonna hurt yourself now here let me take you think she can use that as a step come on oh, Oh my God! She, Mill, not you, yeah, Millie, no. Millie, come on, come on, come on, come on, Millie. Oh my God, dude! When she wants to be agile, she can, but she's super clumsy and just late. Oh God! Oh, she just about got kachowed by that mousetrap. What are you doing? Millie, Millie, they're ready to give it a dangle. So, anyways, boat's clean. Shop is fairly clean. We got most of it organized. Like I said, it needed to be done. How long did that did that take us? That was a few hours. It would have been th probably about right at three hours. Three hours before beefcakes. That's a lot of work. Man, that took us longer than ex expected. But we were, we did actually go through the bins and relabel the bins. And it wasn't like we just like pick stuff up. We reorganized. So all of those bins have labels on it that are accurate and cleaned out. That's a bunch of cardboard that we're tossing out. We had like four or five trash cans filled with just absolute junk. Everything up there is labeled so we know where everything is. Now this is the fishing corner. We didn't do a whole lot of work here, but as we get closer to the fishing season, I'll start tinkering with it a little bit um, and start kind of cleaning this area up. I didn't I, I didn't feel like we needed to go too ham today and throw another hour into organize. Plus I could do this myself. This is just, you know, trying to get some stuff on pegs and, and getting it cleaned up. So with that being said, I don't know why I just filmed all that for you guys. Well, if you guys enjoyed and we will see you guys at the ranch. Shoo! All right, folks. Well, we made it down to the ranch here. We got special guests. We got Garrett. You excited? You're going to help us do big deer things. Right. He, he's a big deer guy. So we, we were out here setting up some protein feeders, what these are called. They're not the the spreading ones gravity feeders. gravity feeders yes that's right so like what's the what are the pros and cons why would you why would i want a gravity feeder and not a projectile feeder uh the electronic ones i think a lot of people use those for like uh states you can bait like, oh you can't bait so a lot of guys because like you gotta to, pull it right like yeah. so uh i think it depends on the state but some days it's like what 10 days before the season or something along those Pretty lines or you can't have a bait site 10 days before season gotcha you can't, you can't sit near within 200 yards of a bait site yeah and you can't like if a deer that you're shooting at can't be within within 200 yards so the idea with the gravity ones is it's it makes it easier to remove a bait station so like if you've got a broadcaster and it's just shooting corn and pellets everywhere and then you remove it well technically those corn and pellets could still be on the ground and could be considered bait this has a little bit more control the other thing that's nice about this is the deer have to come up to it to eat which means you if you set up a trail camera you're going to get better pictures of them because they're physically right there is there anything to do with like because i feel like at least with farm animals you have animals eating on the ground where they poop and that's how diseases can happen but if you're if the nose of the animal is just going in the little circle thing and they're not eating off the ground does that help for like the disease idea or did i just make that up I'm sure it can with parasite stuff but some states that don't allow baiting or feeding at any time of the year is because they can spread like cwd and stuff like that just through eating oh oh really technically they could but there, most states don't really worry about it because the deer are eating the same 
there. Anyways, right? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's all I'm saying. Like, you go into a cornfield, you ever see the deer, like, you know, social distancing? No, they're right next to they're, they're munching anyway. So, anyways, we've got big gravity feeders right here. And then if you guys saw in a previous video, we unloaded a bunch of bags of feed, mineral. We got summer, spring pellets, fall pellets, protein blocks, stuff like that. So, that's going to be today's objective at the ranch is getting, we've got three of them plus the one that's already here. So, we're all four of them set out with trail cameras. And this is actually going to be better than just putting out corn. We've just, so far, we've just put out corn and we just to see what kind of deer come by. But this is actual supplement stuff that will help them grow their body and their antlers. And it's, 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 it's high quality food. It's not just so much corn. We did get some corn to mix in with it just so the deer come up to it because they kind of treat corn as like the candy a little bit. So it'll get them a good taste of that protein. And then hopefully they kind of latch onto it and then come back. And this is obviously going to just help grow the herd as far as like the bodies, even like the does that eat it, their, their fawns are going to be bigger and stronger. It's just like, it's just bulking them up. It's like getting them on protein powder type thing. So that's pretty much the plan. We're going to go ahead and load up. We're, we're going to have to do one feeder at a time just because the mule can't fit uh, more than one. But Garrett's out here. He's helping us. He's been doing a lot of like deer management stuff for quite some time now. And he kind of knows what to do, what to look for. And so he's going to come help us. We're going to give him a whole tour. He's going to be like, yep, this might be a good spot for a food plot. This is a good spot for, you know, mineral station and stuff like that. And we're going to try to walk you guys through a lot of what we're doing. And, I, and then I also want your guys' feedback seeing, oh, what you guys just did is, is a bad idea because of this, or this is a great idea. You should do this in addition to, or, hey, you know, you got your three feeders. Maybe you should buy a fourth one and put it here kind of thing. I want you guys, like I said at the beginning, when I first bought this product, my first video, I want you guys to feel like this is yours. I literally bought this to make videos at, to develop it. And Garrett, he, he came and looked at this and on a map and he's like, dude, this is like insane. This property is insane. It has mad, mad potential. You just really got to manage it. And that's again, why I bought it because it's, it looks good, but if you really, really manage it the right way, I think it could be, it could be a really awesome hunting spot. And so I want your guys' feedback as well. Cause I know a lot of you guys know way more than me about deer hunting management. So that being said, we're going to go ahead and get everything loaded up, do a little tour and pick our first spot for setting up the feed station. You guys stay tuned. just started driving. Look, this is why we bring you. He's like, oh, there's an antler, right? How did he see that? Dude, that's a nice one. That's gonna be a really, really good deer. Look at, what? That's cool. That definitely has gotta be fresh, unless we're, we might be blind. We might have missed it, that's possible. It's this year for sure, but. Dude, that's a sick looking deer. Maybe it's been here for a little bit. That's gonna be. We probably just missed it. We 100% missed it, yeah. Dude, that's gonna be a big one, huh? It's probably a two-year-old, maybe a three-year-old. Yeah. Really? Cool. We're we're literally right by the shed. We just started driving, and he's like, "Hey, there's a shed right there." We we're blind. I went to because it's How right on the path that they walk. Yeah. Look, look, out. we got we got poop right there. Oh, yeah, how's it going? Imagine that. Okay. A lot of potential. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna be a big deer. Okay. Well, hey, we're doing something. Hey, we got something figured out. We got we got a shed down. I was just saying, hey, we hadn't really walked and looked over here, and he's like, "Hey, there's a shed." So that's what the mule looks like. She is. Whew, she squatted. We're loaded up. We got one feeder and enough feed to hopefully fill up two different feeders. So we're gonna set this one up and there's already a feeder on the property. You guys have seen that green one. We're gonna load that one up as well. So we'll get those two and then we'll have two more. So we should hopefully have four feeders set out today. But the part of the reason why we brought here is obviously find some, find some sheds, but then just kind of map out what, we, what we're thinking. He thinks to put one feeder by the gate because the gate is how the deer have been getting in and out of the high fence. Um, and he said, you don't really want to put feeders next to like the bedding areas because you'll then you'll bump them and stuff like that. So you kind of want to just find their travel corridors and set them up there. So we're gonna down towards the pond and see if we can find our first spot. What the hell, Jim? What'd you do? Rip. Why would you do that? Why does this happen to us? What'd you do? It's what'd flat. You know? I, I heard oh, the I pop. Know that, but what'd you run over? I heard, I could hear the I air coming the out of it. Yo, I run over these thorns all the time. I don't know if there's a thorn that really did it. Yeah, there's one right there. Is it in there? Yeah, it's in there. What, why does this happen to me? Every time. Every time we try to do something cool. I can take that tire off that we brought a socket set. Take it in town, tell them to fix it. There's a tire shop in town. All right, well, I'll head back to camp here. This guy's out of his mind. <laughs> he says he sees Dude, one? Dude, this guy's a beast with the antlers. Huh? Huh? Where's he going? I'm Here sorry, what? Up. Dude, how does huh? he see that? How does how does he see that? He's 20 yards away. What the? Well, Dude, we're, dr we're limping this thing back with a flat tire, and he found another shed. From the mule. How's he see that? That thing was buried. Lost your antlers. Why don't we bring him the first yeah, time? Yeah, you should have been here for the first episode. 
I like shit hunting. Yeah, I You're better than his dog. I was gonna say, I brought my, I brought two dogs and they couldn't find any of these. What happened to one of these deals? A squirrel. squirrel eating that? Huh. Well, we got another shed. We're gonna try find a tire shop in town, getting it fixed. And uh, maybe Pool Jet and Bams are gonna do that. And then me and you are gonna walk. Maybe we'll find some more of these. Oh, yeah. Because uh, he's got the eye for them. I don't. I'm just, I'm here for moral support. So <laughs> anyways, let's see if we can get back to the cabin. All right, it's been 30 minutes. We got a jack from Pool Jet's truck, and uh, we're gonna try lifting this sucker up, and then they're gonna take it in town and try to get it filled and patched. And me and Garrett are just gonna we're just gonna scout on foot, old school way, which is something that we need. We need to do a boots on the ground adventure. And since we've got Garrett, he he knows what to look for. We're just gonna I'll take you guys with me. We're just gonna walk and walk and walk, look for sheds, look for scrapes, look for rubs, and places to put feeders, places to maybe hang tree stands for next fall, and put blinds and stuff like that. So let's see if we can get this tire off. <laughs> Well, we made it back to the, the shop. Pool Jet and Banjo, they took off. They're gonna go try to fix that tire. Gary and I are gonna try to get this feeder situated. We don't have any feed for it. Yeah, I mean, it's all over there. But kind of where we figured is, next to the Jurassic Park gate there, that is the entrance. We leave that open so that way deer can come and go because this is a high fence. We are tearing it out though, if you guys are new. We're probably gonna tear it out because this is, in order to hunt white till you have to tear it out, we could leave it and then we could keep exotics in here. But like the rules and laws and regulations and upkeep of exotics makes no sense. So right now we're kind of planning on doing it for whitetail. So they can come in through that gate and as you can see, there's trails here, there's trails that go all the way. And then you were saying there's, you walked it and there's trails there, 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 and there. This is a big basically a bottleneck where everything meets to then come and go. They'll go to the cornfields and eat. So we're putting the protein feeder here. The other thing that's nice is it's right next to the shop. So refilling it is gonna be easy. And you were saying that you don't really want this in their bedding area. Yeah, Cause then you bump them, right? Yeah. So usually when I put feeders up, I try to put it on travel from bedding to food. Gotcha. A ton of bedding back in there. Yep. A little bit of it, but all the trails converge right here on this side of the shed and then this side of the fence. Yep. And that's their only out right now. So everything's funneled in right here. and. It's close to the cabin, but you're not going to be too close and with not being here that often, they're not going to be. You're not going to be, you're not going to be bumping them. And if you do, they'll just run back to their bedding and this, they know this is their feed spot. Now this isn't, would you hunt this or this is just for protein consumption? You, well, not over the Not feed, over the so feed, but, but like future, spot. this spot's not yes. bad for hunting. Yeah. Okay. Cause they're, I mean, they're already used to traveling even once we tear the fence down. So with that being said, let's get this feeder together. <laughs> We got it set up. That was easy peasy. It didn't take us long, more than like five minutes or so. Um, so we got one down. I think we can walk back and at least put the other one together. Um, boys are still, they're, they're gonna be like an hour. So I think we're gonna, we're gonna do some hiking, boots on the ground action and see if we can find anything else. But so far, I mean, pretty impressed. I feel like that was pretty, pretty darn easy. And how long do you think if we fill this sucker all the way, what would your guess be as far as refills? Um, depends on how many, I mean, I'm guessing you got quite a few deer here. So yeah. My deer, I run 250 pound boss bucks and I can usually keep those full in the summer for two to three weeks tops. So, so maybe a month max. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah. So, I mean, once a month isn't bad. Um, at least that way, if you're coming here once a month, you're only maybe potentially bumping the deer once a month, I guess, uh, making it easy. That's, that's the pro to having the big one. Now they make all different sizes of these. You can even make some homemade ones, but the bigger you have, the less often you have to fill it, which means the less opportunity you have to bump the deer. I mean, granted, we are going to be coming in and out of that gate. So there are chances of us bumping deer on this one fairly hot. The rest of them are going to be put over in a little bit further areas away where we might not be traveling as often um but so far we got one down and uh well we better get to hiking well 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 you think it died and guys are ripping it up maybe so there's poop there's that's a buck turd right where it's like that is that what they call this sometimes it's hard to tell oh really yeah. okay i always thought it was but I mean, we got a huge clumps of it probably bunch of deer deer hair so some one of them might have got oh yeah right here there's more deer got ko'd at some point so the ponds right over there we're at a spot we've never been to i like, guess so we're just killing time while they run on we're looking for sheds and looking for areas to put food plots stands just trying to get a lay of the land a little bit but we ended up finding some some fur. This place is cool though. Over here, I've never walked over here. It's a lot more open than I thought. I thought this was so much more dense. But having the pond there and a creek there, and then there's a creek on the other side of this somewhere. It seems like it's a pretty popular spot for the deer. Look at this tree. 
What do you think? It's, is that cottonwood? Yeah. Go, go stay next to it. Gotta get, look, at, look, look at the comparison here. Look how big that tree is. <laughs> Dude, it's met and it like just completely grew up and then figured out a place to shoot up right there. It's hollow. Really? This thing's a freaking dinosaur, dude. So we made it to the, this is actually the creek. It's not running creek, but this is the same creek we were trying to cross when we got the flatty. What's it look like in here? Huh? Wait, do what? What is that? It's like a dog or deer or something. That's not a deer. Weird. weird. And that was inside that? Yeah. Oh, is there another yeah. piece in there? See that white piece back there? Oh God. What the hell? There's a whole leg in there. Wait, wait what's going on right now? I'm pretty sure that's a dog. Bro. Really? Like a coyote or a I dog dog? A dog dog. Really? It's kind of, it's too short and wide to be a coyote, I think. That's so strange. strange. Look how hollowed, yeah, look how it's all hollowed out. I'm sure the raccoons live in this sucker. At some point oh, they yeah. did. That's probably, what, that's probably what that was. Dude, this is crazy. You guys know the green deer hunting blend that we've so seen on this property. It's right over this creek and then it's up that hill and that's like that open main stretch. Um, that's kind of where we've gone to. We just kind of straight, went straight across the pond, but look at that. I never would expect bones to be inside of a tree. <laughs> And if this so is weird. Whatever this is, it's not a small animal. But no. It's pretty short and wide to be a coyote. Yeah, that's so weird. I don't know what that is. But, mm, we're up to that guy. Yoo! You got it fixed, Big Jim. Look at that. We're that's back a, in business, That's baby. a nice tire. I like that tire. You like it? What did Buddy have to say? Oh, she, she was leaking got three, three holes. holes. And it popped off the... Yeah. No, he said, Should so, we go fill the rest of the tires? He got a little horny on the tire, he said. Horn, yeah. Huh? Excuse yeah, me? He marked it. He had a little sprayer and he marked yeah, all of them. So did he fill them or no? He had a... Put a tube inside of it. Oh, so you're okay now? Yeah. Yeah, so it's like a bicycle tire now. Really? Yeah, I got a tube inside there. So oh. so now you gotta go through the tire and the tube yeah. to have her flat. So we should do that for all yeah, the tires. That's, that's the strat. Yeah. That's like a run flat yeah, almost. So you know, we got some green stuff you can like squirt in there. Yeah, I guess it helps with Oh yeah, I know the slime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff, yeah. yeah. Really? Should we air up the other tires? Make sure we don't have another yeah, catastrophe? Yeah, yeah, might as well. We don't want to carry all that, so we're gonna have to No, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, well, we didn't find any sheds, but he found like three when we were driving with you guys. Yeah, what the heck? No, we didn't. What are you guys been doing? Walking. How'd that feeder We walked all the way to the south end and all the way back. Oh, he's getting steps I got my step. I got my steps nah, in today. We, we got some plans though. We didn't fill you guys in. We'll fill you in later. We, we got a couple good food plot plans. We got oh, really? We're going to figure it out. How'd yeah. that feeder go? It was, dude, they're like 30 seconds. Really? No, no, no. We didn't you have all the you feed. Two hours. No, listen, guy, you got the feed. All right. Well, we're going to go fill up the feeder. You guys stay tuned. Shoo! We made it to the first spot. So we're at the feeder that already came with the property here. Uh, one of these little doohickeys. And uh, is it empty? Yeah. yeah. Dude, that was they 50 pounds it. in two days of corn. Yeah. yeah, they kill it. That is wild. That is so crazy. I and mean, we put these corn cobs down. Yeah. They got absolutely KO'd right there. We got a camera. This camera, I need to fix just a little bit. The camera's a little, little tweak. Tweak it a little bit. That's a little bit better. All right, so what's the, what are we putting in? Fall? Fall mix. And this is just straight feed pellets, right? All right, you got it, Banjo? Yep. And that's a 40 pound bag, 50 pound bag? 50, 50 pound bag. And, how, and so this, how big do you think this is? This is probably a a 200 pounder, so pretty much four of these. Okay, while he's doing that, here, I'll pass you this. Let's work on the mineral side. That yeah, looks like uh, the feed we give to our goats and stuff. Give it a mind. How is it? Oh, you got it. Here, we'll tastes give, great. We'll give him a free one. What's it taste like? Two thumbs up. Really? Yep. What's the difference between this this fall mix and, and uh, summer? Fall and winter is not that much difference, just levels of protein and stuff. Gotcha. So so it's more protein for the fall winter, or it's more in the spring? More in the spring. More in the spring, which is for when the fawns are getting dropped off and the antlers are regrowing. So you got all your percentages, I think. Gotcha. Crude protein, I want to say, maybe we can look at the spring summer back, I want to say it's like okay so a little bit more protein so we're doing the fall winter blend um right now because that's what we we've got obviously it's still winter ish going into spring so we're going to run through this uh, basically we have enough to fill all these feeders and then once these are gone we're hoping this should last like month ish and then we'll transition to all the, the spring summer blends which will give more protein um which will help their antlers and stuff like that but two bags in how's it looking you think we're going four i think we're going four i think we're going four so we'll see what I they. Like this post. You like that? That's, it gives it the old lean. Yeah, we might want to pack her in a little bit. Give it one of these guys. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some corn. Concrete. Thing. And I'm gonna throw some corn up in there. Really? Yeah. Get them. That way I get them started. Oh. That way they're like, oh, it's just corn. Oh wait, there's I'm these little brown things. It. And then they like that. All right, let's get some current in there. What should that taste like? It's not gonna taste good. No, no, it, it's sweet. No. Yeah, try it. You're not, you're not gonna be able to eat it. Well, no, you can at least taste it. God. Yeah, I'm bragging. I'm gonna chip it too. What's it taste like? Tastes like the apple? They don't even smell like apple. I don't think it's apple. I think you gotta what? swallow it. Really? There you go. There we go. So we'll get them started. They'll get eat through the corn and then reach the protein. Got 
All right, feeder number one done. We got a trail camera set up on it. This is in a spot that, this was already here, but it's not really that great of a spot. We're gonna go try to scout for some better, better locations. You guys stay tuned. Shoo! All right, found another spot. This is going to be, we decided to not really put anything on the northwest side of the property. We got one in the dead center on the north side, which is the one that's already there. We got one by the cabin. I um, mean, we still need to fill up, but this one is basically where we actually got the flat tires. So the pond's right through these trees here. And this is where, in the, that green blind that we talked about that you've seen in previous videos is right up around the corner. This is where we're talking about putting the big food plot. We're gonna put like maybe one or two little micro plots in the little different areas, but we wanna put a mega plot, a huge bean plot. And we think this is gonna be the area. This or maybe around that corner. Um, but it's a big traveler. So you've got tons of bedding up there, tons of bedding over there. You've got the pond, you've got the creek. And this is just kind of a good travel area. It's also good access. Um, you wanna put these where you're usually driving. You don't wanna have to go like way deep in to the, the timber and stuff like that to fill these things because you're in a bumping deer. So this is a place we're gonna be driving a lot. So if you bump the deer, you bump the deer kind of thing. Um, and it'll make it easy for us to, to fill it up. Throw the bags of feed in. We basically just do one big circuit and fill them up. So let's go ahead and get this guy set up. another one up so we're gonna get this thing full we also gonna do you want to do a mineral site here oh hell yeah so we got shovels for that you move it a little bit yeah now you got it. all right oh. start giving that a little fill cool just got the camera figured out Did over there do you say who what we bring any extra uh, sockets to us? no it's like just a little loose so it's kind of like you barely touch oh, it because that yeah sick this one's just too big we have vice grips or anything I mean, I do back at the cabin. All right, well, anyways, we'll get that camera figured out. Let's get the mineral site figured out and get going and show you guys how we're doing. Man, you get it figured out there, buddy. How, how many bags is that? I don't know. Count. Four? That's your fourth bag. This one we could probably fill all the way. How, is, that, is four going to do it? No, that's only eight. Huh? 200 pounds. Oh, really? So we got three more to go. Okay, so this is a mineral site here. Okay, so beware. You, this, you, you know, you got tricky regulations depending on where you're at for baiting and stuff like that. So you can't have something like this exposed to the track deer during season. But off season, it's a great way to get them their minerals, right? And so what, what are these minerals good for? What do they do for the deer? A lot. Really? Okay, let's hear it. Well, mixed in with this supplement is vasodilators, which improves. That was a big ass word. I wouldn't have been able to pronounce okay, that. Okay, va va got it's, it. It's too smart for me too, but I can tell you like the basics of what it does. Okay. Uh, it improves blood flow and increases the size of blood vessels and veins. So increases blood flow and blood vessel size. Yep. It's just going to pump nutrients throughout their body faster. Really? So yeah, you just mix it in with the dirt. They get minerals from the dirt too. Okay. So, so basically like... If you're watering your lawn, like you can either have a skinny garden hose or a fat one. Which one's going to get it watered the quickest? Uh, the fat one. So that's what this that's does. Right. It makes your, the veins fatter. So this is what we're dealing with. This, is this it? There you go. Can I give this a try as well? So you dump, what, half a bag? Usually it's start to do 10 pounds per month, but if you're just starting a mineral site like we are here, you can go a little heavy. Which would be, and that's a 30 pound bag? So maybe half the bag. 40, Those are 40s? So we can do 15, 20 pounds okay. to start this one. Okay, so we'll do half half a bag and you just pour it on the straight on the ground. Really? And they, they just come up and they munch. And so they, they just kind of munch on it and then they get that's their protein feed and then they get that. So it has some of the same ingredients as the mineral, but the mineral is just like straight. It's just like straight straight, straight to the just it's like taking just a you know, one of them deals. It's yeah. good for antlers, it's good for the fawns, it's good for the does, it's good for the in the summer, the heat. It's good for people. It's good for yeah, take a bite. <laughs> um, right. It can't hurt. You got it. Yeah, take a nibble. Well, it ain't gonna do nothing. No, 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 you got Look, you, look your, your horns look bigger. He's well, thank you. All right, Bans, are you gonna go ahead and give it a dump? It's quite, it's quite salty. Really? Are you ready to dump it? No, we're not ready. It's no. starting to rain, Dad. What do you think? Looks good. Shoo! I'm getting wet. It's freaking raining out here. We're gonna hurry up and try to get this feeder. This is the one that we put up at the shop here. I don't know if our camera's gonna work. We're gonna try setting it up, but we're gonna quickly, quickly get this one. We're gonna get a mineral site set up here and get this thing absolutely loaded up with food and we should be good to go.
think we should be good. We got feed in it, minerals, camera. We're gonna come back and do the next one, so we'll see you tomorrow. Shoo! And we're back, folks. It's been uh, four or five days or so since we came out. We had to let it dry. It rained and rained and rained and rained. Now it's actually kind of green out here. Looks good. Um, but I do have some trail camera pictures to show you guys. Um, we got some pictures from that one over there. The one that we stuck out in the middle. It was the first one that we actually put together and put out. Had no pic. The crows are back. It's not season, unfortunately. But they got no pictures of any. There was no deer on that middle one. So we're gonna try putting some corn out there to maybe attract them just a little bit more. We, I mean, we're guessing that they just aren't in that area. And then we have one more to set up as well um, that we're gonna put in the southwest corner, which is where we, if you guys remember the very first time we put trail cameras out, we had uh, trail camera pictures of the one that with the feeder and then we just dumped corn on the ground where some scrapes were. So we're, and there was lots of deer there. So we're gonna put a feeder there and get some cameras on it. And then that middle one, maybe try to add a little bit of corn and, and check the level on that one. Cause that one we have pictures of. Um, so those pictures right there that you guys are looking at right now are from the feeder that's just next to this. So there's a lot of does. Some of them look like shed bucks. Um, it's kind of hard to tell right now. There's a few of them that look like, oh, they maybe had antlers, maybe they didn't. Um, but a lot of them are staying back. Like they're kind of hanging, if you can see them in the background a little bit, they just chill in the back. They're not all super committed to the feeder. Now they might just be nervous. They may not know what it is. So that's why we're going to throw a little bit of corn out, maybe attract them, maybe make a little line of corn to it, um, just so they get familiar with the feeder. So that's all the pictures from that one. The one up top ran out of uh, battery pretty much the day that we left it. Um, so there's no pictures of that one. And then the one in the middle had no other picture. So now you guys saw the pictures. We're going to go ahead and grab the last feeder, load it up into there, take it to the southwest west corner and get that set up and see JD you guys stay tuned Shoo! well we just made it down to the trail where we have the corn cob 3000 i'm surprised it's still there though if something munched i think it just pulled some had to have pulled that off yeah so this was if you guys saw a previous video we set up the corn whirly twirly thing and we set up a camera i don't know if the camera worked or not um, but we'll have to take the SD card home and see see what it ends up looking like. But that was our contraption here. I guess just, yeah, throw it on the ground and we're going to take the camera home. I, I don't think we're going to, we're not going to review the footage in this video, but we'll at least take it home and, and review it at some point to see, was it squirrels, raccoons? Because a corn cob is on the ground and it looks like there's corn missing from the actual cobs themselves. So we're going to grab this camera. Um, but we did, we went out to the one by the cabin, uh, the feeder, and we threw some corn on the ground. We didn't film it, but I'm telling you guys now, we threw some corn on the ground, got some apple syrup and threw it out there just to try to attract some because you could see in those photos earlier how they're just huddled kind of they're kind of scared of it and i get it it might take a few weeks for them to realize like what it is um and the, the feeder itself was kind of jammed up a lot of it the pellets weren't coming down so anyways pond's right here we're gonna drive past it check that out and then we're gonna go up to the feeder that has had no deer whatsoever which blows my mind but seeing how the deer over there reacted to the feeder they don't know what it is it doesn't have that corn smell they're used to the corn because when we fed them corn before they ate it like crazy this is pellets protein so we're going to try dumping some corn on the ground and throwing some apple crushed stuff on the ground as well to kind of just let them understand hey this is food this big brown tower looking thing it's food um so anyways we'll see you guys over there Shoo! well we did just see our first flock herd of turkeys ever out here okay we've seen today we've seen a squirrel we saw like what do you think five or six turkeys i'm guessing is probably what we saw don't drop the toy oh red when that happened I mean, probably just now. really so we did see turkey so now i'm extremely excited because I've been like a absolute turkey nut for the last like week or two researching it, trying to figure out, because I've only shot one turkey, but now that we have all this land from here, my house, the farm, I'm starting to figure it out, how to turkey hunt. So this thing though, it didn't get touched. No, we smacked it, it dropped a little bit. So I don't but know there was happened. corn in it. Yeah. It so off, what we probably need to do, Banjo, I would just run a, 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 yep, go in the middle and just a nice light trail. Don't need to be like super heavy and use all of it. But all the way to the middle. It's the only thing I can think of. And just see if see if they'll come and eat it. I don't I don't know. It's such a it looks like such a good area. I mean you've got trails, like look at these trails. Granted, they could be raccoons and stuff, but like this trail right here, look at that thing. That could be a raccoon, I guess. I don't know, it looks like more like a deer trail to me. But nothing. That camera's been working. We have zero has it full? Gotcha. Yeah, no, dude, literally hasn't, there hasn't been a single deer on it. They don't like this one. So, Banjo's gonna run some corn, and we're gonna try to get some stuff. I mean, we can always move it. It's just filled with feed now, so it's gonna be a little bit more challenging. Sure um, I, I would rather the animals eat it. It's also filled with probably $100 worth of protein, uh, so I don't really want to get rid of that. I mean, what if you took the little, the three-way thing off, yeah. and dropped it, and then you had a big barrel, like a barrel Just or to catch, it, to catch it, it all? Yeah, you probably could. If, probably if, the if they don't one. touch it, I'll give them like two, three more weeks. If they don't touch it, we, it we're wasting our time over here. How'd that go? Yeah, there you got it. Yeah, you're getting it now. All right, save a little bit, save a little bit. 
Yeah, 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 that looks good. Okay, well, this guy's figured out we're gonna adjust this camera a little bit. Like nothing, we did an entire mineral pile. Nothing, literally nothing has touched it at all. But I mean, obviously deer move different ways during different times of the year and season and stuff like that. But this being in the middle, it's kind of like you have all your bedding there and you have all your bedding there. I figured this would be the channel. This is where we wanted to put the food plot and hunt. This might change our mind a little bit. We're not really sure. Anyways, with that being said, let's head down to the southwest side and set up a new feeder. Shoo! All righty, folks. Well, we are on the southwest side. And look at this. Uh, banjo's got it. This big, big banjo. Nice scrape right here. Fresh prints. So this is what a scrape is. They, they rub their antlers, even though they don't have antlers there. Um, huh? Fresh Prince of Bel Air, yeah. And look at this little creek going on here. This is what happens when you get all this rain. I mean, there's prints right here. All sorts of deer. But, I mean, dude, there's like a literal creek right. Why is this deeper than our pond? Like, that's not even supposed to be a creek. It's just, I feel like it might have gotten, like, it might have dredged it out since the last time we were, like, this looks like a creek. For some reason, I don't remember it looking quite like this. I feel like, like, I don't remember there being a creek here last time. Like, I remember it being kind of muddy, but it's like literal, there's a literal flowing creek right here. So I'm looking for more prints, but this is a nice little sanctuary. This is where I imagine we're going to be getting a lot of our big bucks. But look at it. It's like an actual creek. Yeah. The thing's getting after it. Nice and clean. I bet it's like somewhere if you go up there, it's dammed up. And it just, had so much rain and it just flew it. over it. Yeah. Cause it's like, it's a nice little trench right here. But anyways, this is our spot. I mean, you can see there's deer trails and scrapes and rubs and tracks and there's, there's stuff everywhere. So we're going to go ahead and get this last feeder put up. Oh, we got, Ooh, oh, that might be Ricky. What's up, there's bro? a little fingerprint though. Or I mean a uh, nail. Yeah. It looks, eh, I don't know what that is. A lot of deer prints though. So anyways, we're going to stick it right here. This is a nice little valley um, that isn't super hard to get to. We can get to it, access that way. Um, but this, this is again, is where I feel like the big bucks are going to live come this fall. So we're going to go ahead and put it next. They already have scrapes right here. And I know that there's a lot of sign versus the last one we were out in the middle. It's just kind of like an overpass area, but this, I think it's going to be good. So anyways, let's get her filled up. Filled up with protein. Uh -huh. Make sure that thing's getting it. So yeah, get some corn. I would just dump all that corn there. We found some other stuff. We just brought all of the deer stuff that we had. So we got some apple crush. Well, actually we got some of this stuff too, which is like more concentrated. Is this berries? Yeah, it's like a, it almost looks like a mineral. Oh, it is, that is that's definitely mineral. What kind of mineral is that? What if you sprinkle some of the red stuff? We need to make a mineral site here anyway, so don't we? Oh yeah, true. Oh, yeah, let's do that. We got it. Shoo, looking good. We got, well, next to the scrape, we didn't really mean to do that, but whatever. Uh, protein, we got corn, all sorts of stuff. We got the mineral dug out here. I mean, we're just throwing the kitchen sink at these suckers at this point and just seeing what's around here. Look how we got a camera. That's big chilling right over there. So we'll get pictures and stuff, hopefully. I mean, we're not looking for any big bucks right now because obviously most of them have shed their antlers, but I think, like I said, this is a nice little river bottom area. There's nice cover. I think this is where our big, big deer are gonna hang out. So we wanna get them fed up, filled with protein, getting their antlers grown bigger than last year. So we, that's a total of four, I believe, on this property, which honestly, I think is probably pretty good. If anything, I'd probably move the one from the middle to like the north side or something, but the one that's up north already, or the one that's that was already here at this property is already kind of up north. So I think we've got them. If you guys have any deer tips as far as the protein stuff, the feeder stuff, setting up cameras, where to put some, I mean, like, look at this scrape right here. I mean, it's it's everywhere, folks. We it's You see a dangling tree branch and they sit here and freaking hit their head on it. It's, they're everywhere. The amount of buck sign down here is absolutely insane but if you guys have any tips let us know in the comment section down below and let us know what other videos you want to see here at the abandoned ranch hope you guys enjoyed today's video we will see you on the next one and peace